This example builds on a digital piano rendition of Bach's Little Fugue in G minor. To run it, open the Audiovisual Bach file in 2 and run the included Audiovisual Bach program. Make sure that you let these programs through any firewall you may be using or they will not be able to communicate using OSC. You will hear the music play and you will also see a real-time visualization in the display window. The Audiovisual Bach program does four things. It plays back an audio rendition of the music, it transmits the music's MIDI score over OSC, it contains a number of visual synthesizers controllable over OSC, and it contains two very simple audio synthesizers also controllable over OSC. Audiovisual Bach does not have any user interface at all, instead it's controlled using two over OSC, nor does it display visualizations by itself or play any synthesized music. Both these are dependent on two sending OSC messages. This example demonstrates how two can be used to control both a musical and a visual performance from the same data source, control a large set of disparate parameters for both visual and music synthesis, and gradually interpolate between saved states of such parameters to produce animation. First, we will look at the control signal flow for the visuals. Select the sequencer to visuals matrix in two's controller pane. The weighted routing matrix works as follows. Incoming musical notes to the left are mapped to the parameters of two visual synthesizers, MTO1 and MTO2 at the top. Each incoming value is first offset with the offset values in the rows. In this case, all are zero, meaning there's no offset. Incoming values are then multiplied by each non-zero cell value. And finally, they are offset by the values in the destination columns. Finally, if both source and destination have ranges defined, the value is mapped between these. So a value of 64 from a source with ranges 0 to 127 is mapped to 0 0.5 to a destination with ranges 0 to 1. Now, select the global editor in the controllers panel. Alter the position X parameter of MTO2 and you will see that as you go between values from 0 to 1, the orange set of concentric circles which visualize the right hand playing moves from left to right. In this way, you can alter all the parameters of all connected devices. Play with altering the values of all visual synthesizers in the example MTO1, MTO2 and visual effects Blur01, Glow Blur01 and Barrel Blur01. The effects and visual synths can all be turned off and on by setting their set alpha value to zero or non-zero respectively. Working like this, with the many parameters of many connected destinations, can very quickly become complex. This is why 2 allows saving and recalling states for each destination separately, or all of them together, as well as animating between such saved states. In the bottom left view, you see the states panel. Click the middle scope button to display all saved states within controller scope. This means all states will be displayed that apply to the selected controller, in this case the global editor. Select the second one down the list, rectangles in corners, and click apply. You will see that the values in the main view for the global editor begin morphing to this new state, consequently also animating the visualization. Try alternating between consecutive saved states down this list to get a feel for how this may also be used interactively during a performance. The value next to the apply button sets the time over which this interpolation happens in seconds. Note that each value in the global editor view is the same as the offset values at the columns of matrices. So altering them in one is reflected in the other. Finally, let us look at how the same incoming OSC messages can simultaneously also be used to control audio synthesis. To hear the synthesizer sound, Find the Gains address column in the Global Editor and increase the Synth Gain parameter to your preference. Switch to the Sequencer to Synth matrix in the Controllers pane. Here you see a one-to-one -one mapping between the incoming note messages and the two synthesizers. Say for one thing, the minus 24 values in the note columns for each audio synth means the value is transposed down by two octaves. You can experiment with altering the sound by altering the transposition the piano and synth audio gains, and the included low-pass filter, which affects the synth sound and has the parameters of frequency in hertz and resonance, with a range of 0 to 1. Now, a quick look behind the scenes. The features in the live view are dependent on there being definitions of the OSC namespaces of all connected devices, which you can create, save and load in the namespaces view. 
They're also dependent on there being a number of OSC network locations defined under the scene view, where you see the mother visuals and sequencer and synths locations. Each namespace and location is associated in an address to the left of the scene view. It is these address instances you can then interrelate and manipulate using controllers in the live view. To conclude this tutorial, the editing of namespaces, locations and addresses and the remaining controllers and other features will be covered in future tutorial videos. For the time being, please refer to Two's user manual for more details. In summary, this example has shown the basic usage of the weighted routing matrix in global editor controllers, their interrelation, the storage, recall and interpolation between saved states, and how to can thus be used to interrelate and remote control several different sources and destinations of control data.